So in order to apply those local adjustments that I've been just, just been talking about, I'm going to the adjustment brush. Now Lightroom offers a number of different local adjustment tools, but the adjustment brush is by far the most powerful and most flexible one because we want to essentially mask complex subjects, complex elements in the image and apply specific adjustments only to those areas. That's what local adjustments are about, leaving the rest of the image untouched. And to do that, you need the adjustment brush. Okay, so click on the adjustment brush uh, icon up here or, or press K on your keyboard. And you will see the adjustment section here. And if you scroll down, you see the brush section. And that's the important thing that we'll use first. Because what I always do is I create the mask first and then I apply the adjustments. That allows me to be very precise in creating the mask and, and avoid any kind of halo or rough kind of look that that results from masks that are not really perfect. Okay, so I want to get that mask perfect or as close to perfect as possible in the given time. And then I want to apply those adjustments to the to this specific area that I've masked. Here's how you do this. So first I said we want to um, work on the on the tower itself. Down here in the brush section you have the size uh, of your brush. And I'm going to lower that, that size a little bit. I have a little bit of a feather, that's the, the, the soft F edge of the, of the brush. Flow value here is 100%, uh, because flow actually means or defines how often you have to brush over the same area to apply the mask, 100%, okay? And if flow is 100%, you only have to brush once. If flow is very low, you have to brush often to, to apply the effect to that area to the full extent. Uh, in that case, I want 100% because I want to mask an object. I want to, in a sense, cut out an object. And then the, 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 the most important setting here is the auto mask checkbox. Click that auto mask checkbox to let Lightroom help you in masking the area that you're trying to mask, okay? So with those settings dialed in, I'm going to go to the 100% view. I'm going to scroll to the section that I want to uh, start masking on. And then we're going to start masking that tower. And to mask that tower, you simply put the little cross sign in, in the middle of the brush inside the area that you want to mask. And the remaining part of the brush can range, can uh, rage out of that area. So part of the brush is on the sky, as you see, part of it is inside the tower area. And I'm putting down my brush. And before I do that, I am checking the show selected mask overlay because that shows me the area that I've actually masked, okay? What's going to happen is a pin is going to be created once you let go of the brush for the first time. And that's the representative, so to speak, of that local adjustment. But that's not important for now. So put down my brush again the cross always inside the tower because that's where the where Lightroom is going to sample the colors that it's going to mask. And you can see that it, ver it does a very, very nice job of confining that mask only to the inside of the tower. Always keep it, keeping my cross inside here. And actually what I, what I will do to speed this up a little bit is I'm going to zoom out. And you can see that Lightroom doesn't measure the size of the brush in pixels, but it's like a, an absolute size. So when I, when I zoom out, the brush is going to be bigger in relation to the pixels. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Keep the cross, the cross inside. Make the brush just a little bit uh, smaller. Keep the cross inside the area that I want to, uh, to mask. And have the, the rest of the brush just extend outside that area. And that's how Lightroom can tell what I'm going to mask. Now, if it doesn't work perfectly, if you if you actually mask stuff outside the area, don't worry, we're, we're going to fix that in a second. You see up here, the, the tree branch has been masked too, but we're going to fix that. Once the outline has been masked, I switch off the auto mask feature and I just brush over the interior I don't need to 
pay too much attention to what I'm bra brushing on because I'm uh, I'm the I'm as long as I stay away from the the um, the edges of the object. So now I'm going to zoom in again here. I'm going to apply the, the mask to some of the areas. Let me put on the auto mask feature again. I'm just going to control. You see that there are some sections here which have not been masked and you can easily brush over those to include them in the mask. And then you see that we have some areas here in the trees, for example, where the mask has spilled out outside the area of the, of the tower. And that's where I am pressing the Alt key to go to the eraser brush. You see, now the Alt key is not uh, uh, pressed, so brush A is selected. And when I press Alt, the eraser is selected, which has got the same kind of settings, independent from the brush that you choose before. And it's also got the auto mask feature turned on. And then I'm brushing outside here. Again, I can um, extend the brush inside the area. I'm brushing outside over those regions to clean up that mask, okay? And I don't want to mask the gravel because that's going to be edited independently. And whenever I see that some things are missing here, um, I let go of the Alt key and I mask the inside again. So it's, it's a constant back and forth between the, the brush and the eraser. And that's how you can create a very precise mask. And even if some of the outside areas are still masked, it doesn't really matter too much because you can fix that at any time. So it's not destructive what you're doing here. Just try to get it reasonably well. And you'll be able to go back in and fix that at any time. And whenever you see things like this, spots that have been left, I'm, I either... Uh, tap on those areas to include them in the mask or brush over them or you can switch off the auto mask feature to uh, to mask them um, without without auto masking so you have to be more precise in that case uh, but you won't get anything left out in the masked area if you don't use the, the auto mask feature okay so I guess we're, we're just about fine here. There's a little bit left in the trees. I'm going to go around and see if, there's, if, the, if the mask is good. And it looks very good. So let me fit this into the view. And you see that the red area, that's where the adjustments are going to apply that I'm going to dial in in a second. Before I do that, I am taking that check mark off because I don't want to see the mask. Now I want to see the adjustments. And I scroll back up where I see the, this effect section with all the adjustments. And I'm going to apply a little bit of contrast. I want to get out the details of, in that section specifically. A little bit more con uh, clarity. The dehaze slider is actually uh, done for removing haze or adding haze to an image, but it can work nicely if you only apply a very tiny little bit of it in terms of the contrast. So I'm going to push that up and it just gives me a little bit more crunch here in this area. Now the tower has been rendered darker through those adjustments. I'm going to counter that by raising the exposure slightly. And then I think a more warm tone on that tower is a good thing because it's got that weathered old patina on it. And that's usually a little bit on the warmer side in terms of color and, and texture. I'm going to take the temp slider, just move it slightly to the right to give it a little bit of a yellowish kind of uh, warm feeling. Again, I'm going back and forth between those sliders just to get the adjustment right. Okay, I think that concludes the adjustment on the tower. Mm -hmm.